Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, we're going to make a quilt. Now, one question I regularly get in my emails is, what's a good beginner quilt? What's a good pattern to start with? I know how to sew, but I wanna make my first quilt. Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to make today. An easy quilt that has a simple method, but when you're all done, it will be beautiful and you will feel accomplished, not like a beginner at all. We are going to use something called a pre-cut to make this quilt. Now, a pre-cut is just something that fabric manufacturers put together that's a bunch of prints from one collection, usually 40 different ones, and that makes it easy for you to get a nice variety of prints that coordinate without having to go and select 40 different fabrics to buy. For today's project, I'm going to use something called a layer cake. That's this group of 10 inch squares. I've got 40 different 10 inch squares here, and these are from Laurel Birch and they're nice and bright. Once you've picked out a layer cake with some nice prints that you like, you're going to need a second layer cake, and that's going to be for the background. So you probably want something that's solid or neutral. I'm gonna use this nice solid white one because it's gonna look really good with all these bright prints. Now, if you'd like to make a smaller quilt, it's very easy. Instead of using the 10 inch layer cake squares, you can use something called a charm pack. These are five inch squares. There's 40 of them, and the method will be exactly the same, but the quilt will be smaller. So if you're using charms to make your quilt, it's the same thing. You're gonna need one pack of prints that you like, and then a second pack for the background. I'm going to use this nice solid black. Okay, our first step is to get these open. The first thing we're going to do is mark the back side of each of these background squares. So we're going to be putting a line on the reverse side of the fabric. Now my fabric doesn't have a right or wrong side. It's the same on both sides, so it doesn't matter. But yours may have a right and wrong side. So we want to put a straight edge. I'm using my plastic ruler here. And I'm just gonna use a pencil here. And I'm gonna make a light line from one corner down to the far corner. And I'm gonna do that on every single one of the background squares. Once you've got all of those marked, take the backgrounds and your printed squares straight to the sewing machine. So what we're going to do is take one of these squares and one of the backgrounds, and I'm putting them right sides together. That way I can see my pencil line here. And we're going to stitch on both sides of this line. We're going to stitch a quarter inch away from the line. Now my presser foot is a quarter inch wide. So if I put the edge of this right on that line, I'm gonna get a nice quarter inch seam. And you can always double check. You can make a seam on a piece of paper even and measure, make sure yours is a quarter inch, but that's pretty standard. So I'm gonna go all the way down this side and then I'm just going to turn it around and I'm going to stitch down the other side. Once you've done that with all of your squares, you want to trim right along this drawn line. We're just going to cut it right on that same line. So get your plastic ruler, place it right on the line, which again is corner to corner and cut. And that's going to give us two squares. So now we're going to take these to the ironing board. I like to put the background fabric down first and then peel the top open. If you kind of peel it open and press with your hands like that, you can make sure that this seam stays nice and straight. We don't want it to bow or to sink down at all. So press a little with your hands, then get your iron. And I like to do it dry first. And once it looks pretty flat, then I'll add some steam. And that steam really sets that seam allowance so that the seam allowance is going away from this light background. The last step is to get rid of this little corner here. This is called a dog ear. And it adds a lot of extra bulk if we leave that in. So we don't want that extra bulk in our quilt. 
So I'm just gonna take some scissors and trim those off. Now, if you're using charms, it's exactly the same procedure. I'm still gonna mark the back of the background squares. Now, if your background is very dark like mine here, you probably can't see a pencil line. So I'm gonna use either a white charcoal pencil or a silver, something so that the line will show up. So put these right sides together. So a quarter inch on both sides. Cut these right on that drawn line. Now this time, I'm going to iron the seam allowances toward the background because the background is dark. There's kind of a rule in quilting. You want to iron your seam allowances toward the darker fabric most of the time. There's exceptions, but that's generally what you want to do. Once those are all done, now comes the fun part. I really like when I get to lay the blocks out and start to see a secondary pattern. So I'm going to start in the middle of the quilt and I'm just going to be laying these out in what we would call a barn raising pattern. So we're going to start in the center and we're going to have bigger and bigger diamonds. Now I'm just doing this from memory because I've made a lot of quilts and I kind of know which piece is going to go where. But we do have a free pattern, even though it's a very easy quilt to make. We have a free pattern that will have this layout and several other layouts so you can have fun laying all of your blocks out into a big quilt. So now that we've got a little bit more of it laid out, you can see that we've got a row, so to speak, a row of all the colors, then a row of backgrounds, and that is what you get because all the squares are half print and half background. So we can turn them and get more pattern showing. This is really my favorite part of quilting. This is the part where I get to see a secondary pattern pop out. So it's hard to envision when you're just making these that you can get any kind of different look at all. So the more blocks I lay out, the more of that pattern I'm seeing show up. And I'm not worrying right now about exactly which colors going where. Once I have everything laid out, then I might worry a little more about trading colors around to make sure that the individual colors are balanced. The pink and the green are sprinkled throughout evenly. Okay, it's all laid out and it's pretty simple to do if you just start in the middle, you just build your background and your prints in bigger and bigger diamonds. Once I have it laid out, I like to stand back and look and see if the colors look balanced. For instance, I might not want all my pink in one corner. I wanna make sure it's distributed evenly. Now, sometimes, of course, you want all the pink in one area, all the purple in another, area, and in, in another area, and you can do that too. It's a lot of fun to mix around the colors. Also, I like to put the fabrics I like the best in the very center, and I like this green a lot, so I think I might trade that one there, and then before I sew the blocks together, I'm gonna give it one last check and make sure I don't have any of the blocks turned the wrong way. Now for the charm squares, I did a completely different layout. And you can see it's a lot smaller. So if you wanna make a lap size, even a wall hanging, this would be perfect. So the layout is quite a bit more elaborate, but it's all done just by twisting those blocks around. And this layout will also be included in the free pattern. Now that everything is laid out, we're ready to put this into a quilt top. And I wanna show you the way that I keep everything in order so I don't get any of the blocks mixed up. I'm gonna make this row at a time. So for the first row, the easiest way to make sure you get them in the right order is just to overlap them quite a bit and just put a pin in there. There are other methods, sometimes I stack them, but that's because I've had a lot of practice. If I do it like this and pin all the blocks into a row, I know that they are not gonna get spun around and they're not going to get out of order. So I'm just going to take this first row off right to the machine. So I know these two get sewn together. I'm going to take that pin out, put them right sides together, 
and stitch it together with a quarter inch seam. Now I'm going to do something called finger pressing. So I'm going to press this seam to the side and I'm going to do that by holding it open with my hands here and then drawing my fingernail or the tip of my finger right down that seam. So it's not pressed with my iron, it's just finger pressed. But doing that will help keep that seam going the way you want it to go. I'm going to continue adding pieces and I'm going to finger press all of the seams in this row all in the same direction. So I'm going to put this right back where it came from and then I'm going to do the same thing with the second row. Now on the second row, I'm still going to finger press, but the seam allowance is going to be going in the opposite direction. And I'll show you why in just a second. Here's that second row. And now I can show you why we want those seam allowances going in different directions. So they're going this way here and that way there. So when we come to sew these two rows together, the seam allowances are going in opposite directions. And that's going to make it easy to match the intersection and it's going to make less bulk there. So I'm going to keep sewing the blocks into rows until I've got all the rows finished. Then I'm going to sew the rows together and then the whole top will be done. At this point, the top is all finished and I've got it loaded onto the quilting machine. Now any quilt top needs to be quilted, it needs to have all the layers stuck together with stitching. So you can either do that on your home machine or you can send it to a service, a long armor, who will have a machine like this and they can get it all quilted for you. You could also add borders if you like before you put it on the machine. It has to be finished with binding, but all those steps, those are common to finishing any quilt. And we have lots of other videos that will show you all those steps if you want more information on those. But for now, let's pick out some thread and get this quilted. For thread colors, there's lots of choices for this quilt. It's got these nice deep bold colors in it already. So we could pick from any of the colors in the quilt. Now, these dark colors, the purple and the blue, they're fairly extreme. They're going to show up a lot on the white and not near as much in the printed areas. Same with the pink. If you like pink, that'd be a great choice. Now these two are a little bit lighter. They're going to tend to recede more and that's normally what I like. So it's still gonna show up. This one also, still gonna show up. I really think I'm gonna use this one. The quilting is going to show because there's so much solid, it'll show with texture and then we'll have that hint of blue. That'll just be perfect. For the quilting pattern, I'm using this one called Van Gogh. It's nice and abstract and swirly and it kind of echoes the kind of prints that are in the top. The quilt is all done, and as you can see, it doesn't look like a beginner quilt. It's hard to believe that it's made just from this one block turned different ways. Now this is called a half square triangle block, and you'll see this in many different quilt patterns, often mixed with other kinds of blocks. But you get that overall secondary pattern going, and look at the quilting here. Can you see those little swirls? It's not real prominent, it just recedes in so it doesn't overtake the boldness of the pattern. And then on the back side, just a hint if you move it around because I used the same color thread as what's on the background there. Now it's big, it turned out, I think it's 72 by 90. So you can make a nice big quilt with just those two packages of the layer cake squares. Now the smaller quilt, 
made from the charm squares. This one looks really elaborate, but again, it's just made with that one block. So you just have this twisted and turned different ways, and that just looks really nice with the deep black. And I used a light lavender thread here, so the quilting is more prominent on this one. This one turned out 32 by 40. I used a big, bold print on the backside. It's always fun to use something big and fancy. Now these are fabrics from K Facet. He's a designer who always uses bright, bold fabrics and they just really pop against that black background. Thanks for watching our tutorial today. We hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that gives you an idea of a good beginner quilt to start with. Now, I'd be interested to know which color do you like better? I do really like the deep, bold prints here with the black, but this one is very cheerful too, so leave a comment and let me know which one you like better. Now at the end of every video, we always do a giveaway. We try to give away a quilt, and that's what we're doing today. This is called Chain Links. This is a pattern designed by Deb Grogan from the Quilt Factory, and look, it's got half square triangles in it, so that's what I was talking about. We mix these blocks into a lot of different patterns. Now you can win this today by clicking the link right below the video that says giveaway. And you enter just your email address and your name and we can send this to a winner anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you enjoy our videos and you would like to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.